Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG with a special episode of Ask Dave. What we're going to do for the next several episodes is talk to brand new hams who just got their technician license. So they've gone through the trouble of getting the appropriate paperwork set up with the FCC. They now have their call signs. That's you. If that's you, I'm here to talk to you. First of all, welcome to Amateur Radio, the world's most interesting and broad hobby. There are so many things you can do with an amateur radio license. So what we're going to talk about today is just a little snippet of something. We're going to talk about your frequency allocations, talk about the privileges that you have with that license. You worked hard for it. Let's use it. Don't just get a handheld and fade into the distance. Let's do something a little bit more with that. The technician license offers some very interesting privileges, and we're going to focus in the next several videos how you can use those, what you can do with them, all of these kinds of things. So first, let's take a look at a chart. This chart comes from the American Radio Relay League and is the band allocations for the different classes of amateur radio license. Now, you'll see some things on here that are a little bit maybe odd, it talks about the novice license, which no longer exists, but people who have them can renew them indefinitely. Similarly, the advanced class license uh, no longer exists, and people who have them can keep renewing them, but nobody can get a new one. So let's take a look. If these are the U.S. Amateur Radio Band. You can find this chart at ARRL.org. This one right here uh, was created in 2023 and is the most recent. Okay, so we're going to start up here at the top. Uh, this shows the different types of privileges that are available, and uh, the first one we're going to start with the CW only. A lot of technicians don't know that they can operate in Morse code, okay? And that's this part right here on 80 meters, on 40 meters, now, that's the whole thing right here, unless you're outside Region 2. Region 2 is the Americas. So it's that whole thing right there. And then the next one is up on 15 meters right here. You're limited to 200 watts. And then on 10 meters, you have all CW and data privileges here, plus some single sideband voice up here. So 10 meters is a very interesting band. Now, where you come to shine is you have all the privileges that go down here. The same privileges as other hams. Okay, so 6 meters, 2 meters, 1.25 meters, often known as the 222 megahertz band, 70 centimeters, okay, and then it goes on up into the microwave region, okay? Very few people operate up here, and note here that there are even more privileges. Everything below this line you can do. Up on HF, you can do these things. On 10 meters, since this allows you everything that you can do, you can also do, besides CW, do FT8 and you can do single sideband and a radio that does that, okay? Now, uh, these are CW only, meaning Morse code, and I would recommend starting on the 40 meter band because there's a lot of activity there. Okay, there are places here on these bands where you can do slow code. So if you're just starting out, you can do code there. Now, the two bands that are get the most activity up here are two meters and 70 centimeters. So if you get a dual band handheld or a dual band radio, it usually means this and this right here. There's historical reasons why this is just coming back into use. I won't go into those, they're strange. It's an example of mass psychology 
cause people to go off that band. Now six meters is very interesting because since you can do all things here, CW up until 50.1, but FT8, this is a great band for FT8. And when the bands are open as they are frequently these days, you can operate FT8. Now, we'll talk about equipment in a little bit, but I just want you to note that you have FM privileges here, 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 and on, okay? Now, the problem over here on 10 meters is you do not have FM privileges. The FM privileges are up here and are reserved for other classes of license, okay? So, here are your privileges. Now, if you want to learn CW, it's fairly easy. There is only one qualification required to learn CW, and that's perseverance. Just sheer cussedness. Perseverance will get you your CW. And furthermore, the best way to really learn CW is to get on the air. Now this takes an HF radio. And most of the VHF radios you see only allow FM. But I just want to tell you, there are other things you can do up in here. Now, in future videos, we're going to talk about things like equipment, where you can find it, antennas, all of this sort of stuff like that. One of the things that we're really going to emphasize is the social aspect, joining a club, joining the ARRL, and so on, and what the benefits are to you for doing that. Again, welcome to amateur radio, one of the most varied hobbies on earth. If all you do is 2 meter FM, you're shortchanging yourself. That's like getting a, a hot new Maserati sports car and only using it to go 10 miles an hour. So let's just put the pedal to the metal and find all the things we can do with that new license. So. I have this channel here where I cover questions from people. If you would like to submit a question, send it to askdave, all one word, at A-R-R-L dot O-R-G, okay? And that should get right to me. I may be able to answer it quickly. I may have to wait a little bit while I get my ducks in a row. Uh, we can only do about uh, two questions a week, plus I do four every month in the Ask Dave column in QST, which I write. So please subscribe to the channel, click like, tell others about it, all that sort of thing. And until we next meet, 73.